and welcome to Ease Art Tips. Today I'm going to teach you a little shading trick. So you've probably seen me do some spheres and that's what we're going to do today, which by the way I'm using a Palomino Blackwing, which is one of our geeky, geek out kind of pencils. It's just got a really nice lead. I think it's somewhere around a 4 to a 6B lead. It doesn't say what it is, but it's just it's a nice and velvety to work with. So let's say we've got a ball and the light is coming from that direction. Where that ball is meeting a surface, this is gonna be the occlusion shadow right here. In other words, it doesn't have to get any darker anywhere else in the piece except for where that ball is actually touching the surface right there. So now our camera angle, whether we're looking at it like this or like this, is going to change how much of a shadow we see. So you're working in two-dimensional space, but you have to remember that you're trying to imply three-dimensional space. So you're not just talking about this surface, you're talking about this surface too. So you've got to think like a cameraman and really try to work your, your head around that. So one of the things that you're going to do is you're going to have a hot spot and you can actually figure out the levels of shadow that you're going to have based on their intensity and the darkness of their value. So here's your hot spot. That's going to stay white. The, and that's the paper showing through. But if you think about how light works, let's think about a plane wing. So here's our little plane and here's a wing. The reason planes stay up in the air isn't because they're cutting through the air. What's happening is the air is coming to them and it's going over the wing and it's going under the wing. So it's splitting between the two. This action is creating lift. I'm not sure if this one's actually pushing, but it's the lift that's actually bringing it up. So it's the same way if you think about, here's a stream and there's a rock in the stream. Now, if you've ever watched a rock in the stream, the water moving around it, the water will go like this and it will create an eddy on the other side of the rock. So there's always this little V on the other side of the rock if the, the water is flowing this way. That eddy, you could um, get philosophical and talk about, okay, that's where all the negative energy gets trapped, but it's also a matter of the water is swirling on the other side, just kind of like it does how it swirls over a wing. It's gonna swirl on the other side of the rock. Now, it's not moving the rock, obviously. But if you think about light, the same way you think about air or the way you think about water, it helps you figure out how to shade this sphere. So let's say we've got light that's actually water coming down and around and wrapping around this object and maybe it's bouncing off of the surface. So maybe it's creating a bit of an eddy on the far side or maybe it's even just literally coming down and bouncing off and hitting this image. So what that's doing is that means the light is kind of wrapping around the object. Now, I don't know if it's physically doing that. I'm not a metaphysicist. I only play one on my videos. Um, but what it does in art means that you're gonna get a reflection off of this surface, whatever this is. And if this has color, it's going to mix with the color of whatever that is. So your darkest spot is not going to be this edge that's farthest from the light. And I'll show you what, because a lot of people, when they do a sphere for the first time and they're trying to shade it, they immediately start going dark away from the light. And sometimes I'll even see a shadow that's huge and dark like that. Well, you can see you're not getting any delineation of that object on the shadow. What's actually happening is the darkest area is coming in a little bit because you're getting this light that's wrapping around. So this is actually maybe, I don't know, a five on the value scale. And here's your nine. Maybe let's say an eight or a nine, okay? Here's your 10. That's the only spot you're gonna have that 10. Now, if we're looking at it from say, from up here, you might be getting some dual shadow action And oftentimes there's more than one light source, so you might even have two shadows and a, an intersection of those shadows hitting. And then of course this gradate, get gradates into that light, wherever that's coming from. So that's how you're gonna get that sphere to look like an actual sphere. 
So I wanna play with this a little bit real quick. So I'm gonna draw one more, a new one, because here's the trick and the whole point of this video. When you're doing shadows, or even indeed when you're doing anything that's got solid color in it, light will always come into play. So let's say we've got a double shadow, okay? So we're looking at this ball from up here. So our light source is happening right here, okay? And it's not on the paper like that, it's up here. I can't draw that. This is in a different dimension. So you're gonna have some crossover shadow, but what's gonna be really cool, and this is the trick, is that the shadow might be darker at the edge of where that shadow is happening. And then it gets just a little bit lighter inside the shadow. This one too, a little bit darker at the edge. This is really subtle. I'm probably doing this a little bit stronger than it needs to be done. And then a slightly lighter value when you come into this area. Let's see if I can work this, make it a little bit more clear. Again, I'm working at a really strange angle for myself, so. There we go, that one's starting to do it. So if you notice the drawing that I used for the um, the beginning of this video, that is a drawing of toes, and basically that's a big toe, right? I'm really wanting to get shadow rather than line. So you can see the light is wrapping around the sphere, bouncing off the surface. So what this does, and then you're gonna have a little bit of a gradient too going towards the ball. There's several things that this, this does. For one thing, when you have light on dark, the light's gonna pop forward. When you have dark on light, the dark's gonna pop forward. So here we have the light is wrapping around, which is creating a light edge, which is just enough for a sphere to pop forward against its own shadow. All right, so a good way to practice this would be to draw a square with a circle in it. And in the first one, shade the circle. Make sure those edges are clean. This is one of the biggest things I have to work with my students about. If those edges are not clean, you are sending confusing information. And when your viewer is confused, your image doesn't work. And a second one where everything is shadowed except for that circle. And that's a great way to see how dark on light pops and light on dark pops. But back to this idea. So what's happening here, and this happens with color as well, is that light is coming into play in that shadow area. You're not getting a matte flat value. One of the best artists to play with this in color is Maxfield Parrish. So if you look at some of his images, he plays with a lot of contrast of color of light. Maybe I'll talk about that in another video, but he'll have a yellow light and a purple shadow and they'll butt right up next to each other. So let's say this is indeed a toe, okay? Just like in the video, in the image that I have opening this up. And let's say the light's pretty strong. And so you've got this dark shadow happening here, which is basically this right here, just taking on some dimension because of the shape of the toe. But the shadow is gonna get a little bit lighter as it comes down, it's going to gradiate a little bit. Then it's going to get dark again. And then you'll have the shadow of it sitting on the ground. Same thing that the sphere is doing, but now it's a toe. But you can see, hopefully you can see, by having this darkest up here, you get this interesting little area where the value becomes a little bit lighter. But you still have this wrapping around value as well, which is basically this happening right here. This makes for a beautiful way to demonstrate form and have shadow work. 
So that's the trick, really. It's just go from dark to a little bit lighter to a little bit darker, but always leaving just a little bit of an edge. And that will really help to give your two-dimensional objects three-dimensional form. But these are some of the tricks that I share with my students. And I have them do this little exercise right here and this little exercise right here. Try to get a little bit more smooth than I do. Obviously, this is just a demo. But if you think about light like water or you think about it like air, it really can change the way you draw. So see if you can um, pull some of these methods into your own drawing style and see, I hope it will help you improve. So thank you very much for watching Ease Art Tips again and I hope to see you back soon. Thanks. Oh, and subscribe, eh? Yeah. <laughs>